you about the top two primary. Um, personally, I would like to modify it. The Green Party is actually suing for it to be modified. Um, we need to invent a way that there are multiple candidates on the general. You know, two is not a magic number. We need more than two candidates. We need the full spectrum of representation on, on an election. Um, so, so that's the goal. We've got to figure out how to get there. Um, the Greens have had modest support at statewide level offices, um, but it's been it's historically been a way for us to maintain our ballot access, but they've taken that away from us unless one of us fortunately breaks through. And I, I think we've got a great shot. We have four wonderful candidates. And if the, star, if the stars align, one of us is going to break through and get our whatever it is, 2% or something. But, but to me, like the 2% is just, it's meaningless. We've got to build a party be, way beyond that number. And that, that's when they're going to take it seriously. Right now, the press is taking declined state more serious than third parties because they've got 20% support. There's a fellow in this race who's a former GOP member. He's advised GOP president's campaigns. He's pretending to run as a declined state person because he, he sees they've got 20% support. So that's what it comes down to is uh, you know people are kind of trying to game the, the system. Um, and then just some numbers. Even with the Dem Democrats in the race are currently splitting the vote, their vote, at least three ways. Um, which helps me, but because of the amount of Democratic support, it's still about 20 to 1 in terms of if I get all the Greens, the Peace of the Freedoms, some of the Libertarians, some of the Decline of State. I'm still outgunned 10 to 1, 20 to 1, because it's a numbers problem. Um, but, you know, that's why we've got to have the open, open debate, because that's my shot to say, yeah, I can, I can hang with the Democrats, I'm as good as them, I'm probably even better because I'm more nonpartisan. Um, and then how, how many decline of state voters are willing to consider a green? I think a fair number of others, you know, discussed with Congress, discussed with the lock that, you know, one party or two party has on the process. So, so I, I think that this decline of state voters are willing to look at us seriously. Um, we've got to have more voter participation and more choices on the ballot. Um, the, you know, the voters are checking out. They're not voting as much as they should be voting. Because, because of a lot of reasons, you know, if you uh, had your heart broken supporting a minor party candidate in an election, you know, the next time you might not be so rare to vote. So, and and there's people that um, our population is becoming more transient because of the bad economy. So there's people that are falling off the books, not voting, not participating. So so my my default position as Secretary of State be get as many people participating as possible. If you're a breathing human adult person in California, you're going to vote. Uh, you know, we'll we'll settle the, the legalities later. <laughs> you show up, and you're handed a provisional ballot, you vote, and then they make sure, yes, that's John Doe. Here's his ID. You know? <laughs> yeah, and I, it's not absurd, but you know, it should be that because if you're sampling the, the opinion of the population, why wouldn't you want that sample field as big as possible? I mean, everybody, everybody should be voting. Um, Okay, um, voters are sick of corporate money saturating our public process. How many of you are willing to support a no corporate money camp? Greens need to show up and vote in June. Um, let me give you some numbers here. 31,000, okay, when Deborah Bowen ran for re-election in the primary, 31,479 Greens pulled a lever. 31,000, okay. Um, to date, in my campaign, 36 people have donated money to my campaign. They're averaging about 82 bucks a pop. I've raised $3,117, which is more than I need to file. So very good news. The next hurdle is going to be 6,250 bucks. That's how much each candidate has to raise for that ballot statement. That should be free. The ballot statement should be free. I mean, if somebody's going to take a year off from their family to run for office, you would think they'd give them a paragraph for free, but they don't. It's $6,250. Um, here's some good news. 92 Californians have volunteered their time to help gather signatures. That, that's amazing. That means that if everybody's super motivated, they can go get 100 signatures in a week or two, and we're, we're all along. So, so there's, a, there's a body of people out there. And those are the, just the people that went through my campaign website. The other campaigns also have people. So we might have 400 people out there gathering signatures. 
when I'm getting people to sign, they're like, what, you know, why, why should I support this guy? Um, and I'm saying, I'm, I'm a Green Party candidate. I'm a candidate for the party that we have now, the way it says. This is what we've got. This is the moment to do it. Um, I've got a family to support, too. I know, you know the economy's bad. You've got to conserve resources and stuff. But if everybody just gives a little bit of money, you know, there's, if those 31,000 people who voted Green can show up for these campaigns and help them out with a dollar or five bucks, you know, that, would, that would make us viable. Um, Again, I've approached the League of Women Voters. I met with them at a luncheon in Sacramento, and I told them about the race. I told them how many candidates were running, and they were high-quality candidates. So, so they're definitely in the race. So I hope this happens. Um, like I said, I got some TV coverage uh, three, day, three days ago on KCRA in Sacramento. did a story. Um, the way I got it is I harassed them on Twitter. So I would encourage all the candidates to harass them on Twitter. Um, it's taken six months of campaigning to get mainstream media coverage. And uh, I've also had a uh, token mention in Los Angeles Times, and San Francisco Bayview did a great uh, article, basically because I had a, a installed a writer. <laughs> so I got a friend to write it. So um, Governor Brown acknowledged the presence of a drought today in California. Um, although we, the Western states, have known about it for 12 years. So, you know, if we had a green in the office, um, we would have already been taking the steps necessary to protect our water resources. You know, it's been going on for 12 years. It was just announced today. You know, I'm glad he, I, I'm glad he noticed. Um, but that's why, you know, that's why we've got to get greens in the office. So look at our candidates. Uh, you know, we've got great greens running. Luis Rodriguez, Laura Wells, Ellen Brown. Uh, check out what they're saying because it's, it's better than the corporate product. And we just need, we need a little support, a little money, and some uh, you know, access to the airways, and we'll get it. So thanks for coming.